What's up, YouTube? I want to take this opportunity to do a quick tour of my home theater. <clears throat> um, this is a complete um, DIY project that I did. I've been working on it for about five months. Uh, quick little story. I always wanted to have the space to do a dedicated home theater. Um, finally convinced my wife to let me turn the upstairs bonus room in our house <clears throat> into a home theater. Um, I originally said man cave. She was completely against that. But once I said home theater, she changed her mind. So <laughs> basically Monday through Thursday is my man cave. The weekend is the home theater. So hey. Um, but I wanted to do this video because a lot of the ideas, well, all of the ideas I got off YouTube, um, watching other home theaters, um, it really helped me. Um, this whole project, like I said, I did completely from beginning to end, planning everything myself. No experience with wiring, electrical, anything like that. I learned it all off YouTube and reading on the internet, studying up about how to do it before I did it. And over the course of the last five months, I come up with a real budget-friendly home theater. <clears throat> um, so I just want to go over and show you guys um, how it turned out and maybe help some others um, with some ideas the way that you two would help me. Um, the room is fairly small room. It's about a 14 by 11 bedroom that had a walk-in closet um, upstairs. So uh, let's get to it. Let me show you. All right. Again, this is the bonus bedroom going up on the top of my house. Uh, as you can see, going upstairs, you see the lights are coming on. At the top of the stairway, I have a couple of movie posters that have sensor lights on top of them. Now, <clears throat> those sensor lights I actually got from Lowe's. Um, I saw on YouTube a lot of people had, you know, the posters recessed in the wall and all lighted up. And again, this had to be budget friendly for me. Um, happened to be at Lowe's looking for something else and happened to be on the lighting aisle and I saw these little sensor lights that are really made to go above your outdoor window or your back door so that when someone walks up, you know, the light comes on. <clears throat> but while I was standing there, I saw and read the way they worked and immediately thought that I could put them above my poster and they would work out for lighting up my poster. And I got to tell you, guys, they work wonderful. They take, uh, if I'm not mistaken, two AA batteries. Um, uh, I put them up back in October. Um, the batteries are still running strong. They're still bright uh, because I don't really come up here that much. You know, me and my family comes up here normally every Friday or Saturday. Um, or even both, depending on what's going on that weekend. Me personally, through the week, I may get up here once, maybe twice, depending, um, you know, to watch TV, to watch a game or something like that. So these lights never come on until it reads motion. So it works out pretty well. Um, the posters here, of course, this is the Avenger poster, uh, the new Star, Star Wars movie. My girls, I have three girls, uh, nine-year-old, and five-year-old twins, they are completely obsessed with Star Wars now. Um, as a matter of fact, before the last movie came out, I bought the whole Star Wars pack box set, and that's one of the first things we watched in the theater um, before I actually took in to see the new movie. Um, this poster here I came across on Amazon. Um, thought it was really cool because it had all the movies on there. Um, ordered it. Um, took it a while because at the time I ordered it, didn't realize it was coming from China. Um, but I, I still think it's a cool poster. Um, the little frames are just maybe seven, eight dollar frames from Walmart. Um, 
got a couple other posters that I had up here before, Big Hero 6 and all. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. So I've actually switched it out before. Uh, it's not that hard, not that big a deal. Alright, now here to the left is the door to the theater. See, welcome to our home theater. So let's go see. Alright, guys. As you can see, this is my little humble theater that I worked on together. Um, has a window upstairs um, that I completely blacked out with the blackout curtains. Um, all the guys, you gotta have that Scarface poster if you have a home theater. I gotta tell you, um, I bet you in 90% of the home theaters I saw, um, that poster right there was on the wall. <laughs> so I had to add it to my collection. Um, got the Rocky. Four poster um, movie that I love. Um, I actually got the whole Rocky box sets. Um, um, between Rocky Four and Rocky Three, Rocky Three probably my best, you know, my most favorite Rocky Rocky movie. But Rocky Four pretty close. Um, let's start. Uh, let's see here. The seats. Right in here, so you can see the seats are the seat craft Venetian seats. They are um, the front three seats here are power, power recline, um, lighted cup holders. And each um, seat has two USB ports on it that you can charge a cell phone, whatever else you want to. Also, each one has a tray here that you can put, you know, to use for eating. The real two seats in the back are actually manual. Now, again, like I said, I've been working on this for five months, so originally when I did it, because the room is only 14 um, by 11, um, I had just the front three seats and I had a uh, bar counter uh, behind the front three seats with two uh, leather stools um, that set up higher than the seats. Um, because in the beginning, I just didn't think I was going to be able to have another set of seats like this in the back because of that door there and just the space. I thought the front seats would be way too close. Well. After I got the seats and I got the, the bar table there, it was fine. Um, but after doing the measuring of the seats and all um, and, and doing some math, I felt like I could, I could definitely do it. Um, get another row of two there, which is only five of us here uh, is all I really needed. Um, and possibly just sacrifice the back two rows from completely reclining. So since I wasn't going to be doing that much reclining in the back, I decided why well, spend the extra money for power when I'm not really going to be reclining. Um, the back two seats, they also light up, um, but they, they're not power recline. They're sitting on a seven inch riser. Um, the riser is actually 60 inches long. Um, so from the wall, you know, it sits out five feet, um, making the front row between you know, nine, nine and a half feet from the screen. Um, that screen is a 106 inch diagonal silver ticket screen. Absolutely love it. Um, it, it did, it, you know, it took some, uh, it was kind of hard putting together if you're doing it by yourself. Um, that's only because the brackets, it, it really stretches the material to make sure there's no wrinkles or anything in it. But once it gets together, I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, the screen is just the right size for this room uh, and, it's, and, and the distance that I could put to the, the projector. Um, the projector is a 
Optoma HD26 um, 1080p projector. It does 3D. Absolutely love this projector. And I picked it up on Amazon, I think, for a little over $600, um, which for me is my very first projector I ever had. Don't really have anything to compare it to, so I think it's awesome. Um, I did a lot of reviews on projector before I bought it. I did hear people talk about the the fan noise, and, and you know, guys, there are some it is some fan noise depending on what setting you have it on. Um, even on the eco setting, the fan is is kind of loud on dynamic when you turn on dynamic black, which only makes the screen a little brighter. Um, the fan is is pretty loud. Um, but you don't notice it unless you're just here watching a game. Normally when we're watching a movie, the, you know, the sound is up so loud, you don't hear it at all until there's a quiet part of the movie. If it's on eco mode, you really can't hear it. That, it's not bad at all. In eco mode, the picture is beautiful. Um, I actually prefer it on eco mode, not just because of the, the lower fan noise, but... Um, the uh, dynamic black seems to make it a little brighter than I would, you know, I like. Um, so um, it's great with ambient light. Although I have the curtain bright uh, blacked out here, I can actually turn the lights wide open here, and and you can still see the TV. It's just a little washed out, um, but it's not bad at all. Um, oh yeah, let me show you some other things I did here. Um, in the room, like I said, this, this door here, it's actually a door to my attic. This room is over the breakfast nook part of my kitchen. Um, and the attic is over the garage. Uh, it's an unfinished attic. Um, hopefully the plan is to maybe one day finish that, turn that into the actual theater, and maybe have this room as the lobby or something. Um, this door here is the actual bathroom up here. You know, it has a full bath. I put that little mirror on the on the wall here. Um, nobody ever showers up here. <laughs> um, they're not allowed uh, unless it's a special occasion or I would just uh, got all the bathrooms taken up and, and, and just need to do it real quick. Um, so the shower never really gets used up here. Um, but, um, also, this door here was the walk-in closet. So let me show you what I did with the walk-in closet. Actually turned the walk-in closet into a little concession. I have a Nostalgia pop, uh, popcorn maker there. It's an eight ounce kettle. Um, you see it came with actual little candy rack that lights up, but I actually bought two spice racks. I think they might have cost me a, uh, a buck a piece uh, from Walmart or somewhere and turned them into candy racks. Um, I used the shelving in the closet, you know, hold the other candy, popcorn buckets, lots of paper towers for cleaning and all. You know, the movie popcorn, I mean, the movie candy you can actually get from the dollar store Walmart for like a, a, a dollar a piece or 99 cents. Even the cotton candy came from the dollar store for uh, a buck. Um, you can see that there's nachos here. Um, under this little table here, I have a little small slow cooker that we use for only for nacho cheese. Um, so I actually can do nachos. Um, I actually put this little table here that pops out, you know, so I can use it to, you know, to make the nachos or, or do the popcorn. And when I don't need it, it folds away. Uh, that's the butter for the popcorn. That is a bottle warmer. I actually got that idea from YouTube. Uh, a guy was saying that he bought a whole bunch of butter and he bought the warmer for it, but when he fills it up, you know, they never use it and it would only eventually get bad. Uh, so he he bought a bottle warmer and just poured it in a little um, container there and used it as they need it. And that, it works out great. Um, 
I mean, you start the popcorn going, put the water in there. Anybody that got kids know the bottle warmer warms up pretty quick before the popcorn is done. The butter is nice and warm. Um, got the seasoning for the popcorn. Also, even got some caramel there. I, I can make candy corn. Uh, I use these little packets here, the Mega Pop for my popcorn. Um, I've tried several ones, and I gotta tell you, I actually think this Mega Pop is better than any of them. I mean, it uses just the right amount of butter, uh, just the right amount of seasoning. Uh, you actually. Uh, my family, I'm actually the only one that uses this, this seasoning. Me and one of my twins likes the little garlic parmesan. Other than that, the popcorn comes out so great, you don't even need it. Um, little refrigerator here, got from Walmart. Um, I think it might I might have got it on sale for a hundred bucks. Has a separate door for the freezer. See, so we got ice cream and and just full of drinks here um, little trash can there <sighs> very convenient I mean I have the drinks have the popcorn I have a bathroom don't have to go downstairs at all um, I can stay up here and hide if I need to <laughs> do whatever um, pictures on the wall my wife bought me that uh, I think she got that from Kirkland uh, the picture on the back wall I actually bought from Kirkland's happened to be in there one day uh, I think it was on sale for 20 bucks um, so I bought it um, let's see here I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I have down here as far as equipment um, as you can see uh, again, it had to be budget friendly, so I didn't get high end audio or anything like that. I do have Yamaha uh, audio system. Um, it is a Yamaha, I think it's a R, RX438 or uh, 478. Oh, uh, no. Uh, RX 378 receiver. You know, it has the uh, 3D pass through. Um, I have the dish, satellite box, and a Samsung, I think, J63 um, Blu ray player. I got, I picked that up from Walmart. <clears throat> it's over 100 bucks, but I gotta tell you, it is awesome. I mean, it has a smart, it has a smart hub where I have, you know, the Samsung apps. It has Netflix in it, although my Hopper has Netflix also. But I actually like watching it through uh, Netflix through my um, Blu-ray player. <clears throat> it seems to show better to me. Um, uh, but that thing is awesome. Uh, my speakers again are just regular Yamaha surround sound speakers. I bought those separately. Um, so it didn't come as a package with the receiver. Um, um, I can't remember the brand. It might have been uh, NS180 or something like that. The speaker speakers are not uh, big speakers, but I got to tell you, they are loud. They sound great. That's a Yamaha subwoofer. Um, and again, because the room is only 14 by 11, I didn't need it to wake up all the neighbors and everybody else. It does just fine. I can't hardly turn it up in here. It's so loud. Um, and as you can see, the one of the last things that I did to the room are, I mean, is those acoustic panel that you see on the wall. Um, make a long story short, I don't know if it's because the room is 14 by 11 or being on upstairs or the way it's shaped, but Originally, with the sound system in here, I had a issue with the bass, trying to get the bass right. And, and again, it's my first time doing this, so I, I did a lot of research. I actually started building it before I did all the research on the sound. Um, in the back of the room, against that wall, without the acoustic paneling, before I, I put anything in here, um, the bass sounded awesome. 
It might have been even too heavy back there. But the problem was right here where we sat, because even before I had those two chairs in the back, when I only had the uh, bar counter back there, my five family, we sat in these front three. Uh, my girls are small, so my wife normally sat in that left chair with one of the twins. My nine-year-old daughter sat in this right chair with um, the other twin, and that was Big Daddy's chair in the middle. Um, so we never sat in the back. And because we sat here, that was a different in the base. I mean, you know, it's, it's only till recently I started reading and found out about standing waves and all, and dynamic. You know, I didn't realize how much all that went into sound and home theaters. Um, it wasn't so bad in the middle in this chair, but I got to tell you, to me, that that left chair, the base was almost non-existent. Um, and by then, I had already ran the wire all the way through, you know, the walls and to the back of the wall and set up the, the subwoofer over here. Um, that's before I did the research and found out about the base crawl. Um, just didn't want to go through climbing up in the attic and <laughs> on top of this room again. Uh, I'm a fairly big guy. I'm 6'5". Um, the attic's kind of small. I didn't want to deal with that again. So I started trying to find out if I could fix it fix the problem acoustically um, and do it on a budget there again as you guys know the real nice panels they are really expensive um, and I did not want to get the acoustic panels that look like the egg crates I, I kind of you know although if done right they, they really look good but I didn't want the room to look like a recording studio I wanted to still have that theater look and that theater feel so, I was looking around online and I saw these uh, panels, uh, 12 by 12 inch by 12 inch acoustic panels that are beveled. Um, you know, I, I, when I saw them, I felt like they, they, they still went with the theme of the theater feel, but did not, you know, didn't really look like a recording studio. So I bought some, um, and, and actually before I bought those, because it was a bass issue, I originally bought these bass traps. My plan originally was to put the bass traps in all four corners, but then as you can see, the back wall there, the way it slopes there, and because I have that door there, when I got the bass traps, I realized I wasn't gonna be able to do that because of the size of them. Um, so I put them up front and tested them out. It actually helped, um, it helped some, I mean, um, you, you can start hearing the, the, the bass a lot better. Um, but it wasn't until I actually put the acoustic treatment on that back wall and that back door to where it is almost completely fixed here in that, up front now. I would say it's not 100% like it is in the back, um, but I would say it's probably 70%. So, I mean, unless you just being nitpicking like me, you probably won't even notice it um, now um, so I'm happy with the way it turned out I still don't think that and I don't think that it looks like a uh, you know a recording studio I think it still looks like a home theater uh, which is what I was shooting for um, this spent a whole lot of money uh, I don't know unless someone requests I may do uh, another video about what I what I spent um, um, Again, it's my first video, or I may put it in the uh, comments. Um, but I love it. My kids absolutely love it. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I can actually get them in line. <laughs> you know, if we're out and they're kind of being, um, you know, uh, mischievous and, 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 and not uh, uh, behaving like they should, um, I put it out there if you don't behave. We're not going to go upstairs and watch a movie. And almost immediately, the <laughs> behavior becomes just perfect. So um, they love coming up here. But if it was up to them, they come. They would come up here every day. Um, we normally don't come up here together on a school night, only just the weekend. Um, they're getting used to that. Uh, but it still don't stop them from asking every day I get home from work. Um, I love it. Uh, just, just another thing, uh, guys. 
the um, this is the Lutron dimmer. Um, there was a ceiling fan up here. I took it down to put a flush mount light fixture up there so that you know the projector um, wouldn't be obstructed by the ceiling fan. No experience at all doing the wiring. Um, researched it out, did it myself. Behind this curtain, right here next to this ottoman. Oh, and then an ottoman, by the way, is just blankets that we use um, when we're up here. Um, right, right, right behind the ottoman, I actually put in a uh, a socket, a HDMI socket, um, the uh, VGA sockets, so that you know I can take my Xbox 360 with connect and plug it up. Um, didn't really have anywhere to put it to just leave it out. Um, didn't want to put anything else in here to obstruct the screen, so it's pretty mobile. I have a 65 inch flat screen downstairs above the fireplace, so I like keeping it mobile so that if I want to play it down there, I can just take it down there and hook it up or bring it up here and hook it up. Um, um, but I did that wiring myself. I added two new power plugs to this wall. This closet here, um, that's the concession. Of course, it didn't have any power in here. I added that plug and I added a plug here myself for the very first time. Um, that really was the only thing I was nervous about, that electricity. But after I got used to it, it didn't, you know, came out uh, you know, pretty easy uh, once you start understanding. Also, um, the, the, again, like I say, the projector is 3D. Um, you see the 3D emitter that I have on there. And, and I got to tell you, it, the 3D active shutter glasses are expensive, but when I tell you that it's like night and day between that and the regular 3D, if you got a chance to get it, you need to get it. Because as of right now, my twins, they don't, my five year old, they don't think any program or any movie should not be in 3D. <laughs> um, up until I got these active shutter 3D, I really wasn't I really wasn't a big 3D movie fan. Now that I have these glasses, I'm I'm almost um, uh, in the mindset that they are now. Um, I prefer to watch it in 3D if I can. Um, um, it, it's just awesome. Um, I got this little uh, DVD case here, bookshelf with a lot of Blu-rays, but also. And I'm sorry for the video, guys. I know it's dark, but it's my cell phone. But I also have this little case here that I keep my 3D glasses in. Over the last five months, I've accumulated about 10 pairs of them. Well, no, eight pairs. Um, said I was going to go to 10 and then stop. Um, that's mainly because when my kids have friends over, you know, if they want to watch something in 3D or, or if we have another family over that we're entertaining, I want to have enough that they can watch it. Um, these chairs are so big, it easily will sit two kids per chair. Um, my storage space here in the attic is where I have my old um, bar counter that was behind here in the two leather uh, stools. So... If I'm having a game and I got the guys over and I need a couple more chairs, um, I open up the attic and I pull out those two um, uh, leather stools and I set one right here by the door and one over in that corner. Um, so it fits seven adults very comfortably. But I even have a couple of big Joey beanbag chairs that my, my girls like to sit in too that I can put on the side here or out front. Um, again, the front seats are about nine, nine and a half um, feet away from that 166 six, six diagonal screen. So it worked out for my purposes. Um, for what we need for my family, I'm in love with them. Very proud of how it turned out. Um, sorry for the video being long, um, but I really wanted to take the time to do this and, uh, and thank everybody on YouTube for your ideas. Um, I guess for now that's it. Please feel free to comment. Thanks.